Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I would like to go over the Mobilytics patch 7.24 tier list. There is a little bit of a twist to this patch. It reads, Greeting Summoners. It's the final sort of patch of the preseason, and that means a lot of tweaks based on our first round of data. The game always changes a decent amount this time of year, so we're looking to make sure that, heading into the next season, most champs at least feel the same, and some might even have the potential to do more. We want to make sure that we don't head into the winter break with huge outliers still hanging around, so we'll be doing another minor patch before then. So not only is there a patch that comes out today, but before the preseason ends and season 8 officially begins, there will be another minor patch that comes out before that as well. Anyway, let's look at the tier list. Working our way down from the top side of the map, for S tier and top lane, we have Jace, Orn, and Teemo. Jace has been a pretty staple pick in our tier list for a long time now, and that's simply because his laning phase is just too good. Although top lane is a little bit less relevant right now in the current meta, either you win lane very hard by picking champions like Jace, Teemo, or Pantheon for top lane, or you play a scaling champion such as Tanks, or Gangplank, or Jax. Teemo as a champion has been sleeper OP for quite a while, but this preseason is even better for him. Games are very short and snowball-y, which is exactly what Teemo wants to make the most use of his dominant laning phase. On top of everything else, both the runes are doing a lot of magic damage, and there's very little magic resistance in the game right now, which means that Teemo makes really good use of things like Aerie, Comet, Scorch, and he can even do things like Press the Attack or Grasp of the Undying. At the moment, it doesn't matter too much what you take on Teemo. You can even build an off-tank or tank Teemo build just because he does too much base damage. Damage. For top lane Riven, we did move her down despite her receiving some buffs. This is just because she struggles versus a lot of the top lane matchups at the moment, especially versus our A and S tier champions, but her buffs are quite good. For the rest of top lane, you just want to look at tanks, and there is one special mention we'd like to make about Olaf. Olaf has been rising in popularity in Korean solo queue with a new Arcane Comet build. The idea is that you play a very poke-heavy style of Olaf, poking down with Qs, and the slow guarantees the Comet proc. Essentially, you start Corruption Potion, and then you just spam Qs until they're about 40 or 50% HP, and then dive them. So make sure to keep an eye out for Olaf. Onto the jungle, despite their nerfs, both Xin Zhao and Ramus are quite good and they're very tanky for how much damage they deal. Xin Zhao is a little bit more of a bruiser, but because he's basically un-1v1-able and Ramus is just a mega tank, these champions are very good for solo queue. Both their ganks and their farming honestly isn't bad, and their late game scaling is also quite good. They can teamfight, they can skirmish, and gank, everything you would want out of a jungler. For mid lane, your meta options include Assassins and Poke Mages. Katarina will be regarded as the best mid lane champion in the game for quite some time unless she receives some nerfs or the meta drastically changes. She is the premier assassin and defines exactly what an assassin should be able to do in order to be a hard carry champion. Her all-ins at level 2 and 3 are disgustingly strong, she can roam around, do a lot of damage in teamfights, and her resets allow her to be very bursty and have a lot of mobility. For the best mages to play, let's look at Xerath, Zillion, and Azir. With the preseason changes, Xerath has now become a top tier mid laner and a quite good support on top of everything else. With the low magic resistance, the runes doing a lot of damage, and his ability to spam spells because of mana flow ban, this means that Xerath has finally reached top tier because of his long range spells, his sieging potential, wave clear, and poke. For Zillion, it's a great time to play him. He's been flying under the radar, but his laning phase has given a boost due to the rune changes and lack of sustain in the meta. Once he scales, his insane slow makes securing picks very easy, and he can help his teammates create awesome opportunities with his speed buff and his undying ultimate. For bot lane AD carries, Ezreal and Misfortune are still going to be your best go-to picks despite the Ezreal nerfs. However, let's talk about fleet footwork. After playing just one game on the new patch, I saw that my Lucian AD carry had healed 6200 from his fleet footwork throughout the game. So AD carry champions who are able to make good use of the fleet footwork rune, such as Lucian, Jin, or Vayne, might be able to rise up in priority. The best part about picking Jin and Varus is that even if the fleet footwork is not meta changing, they are still quite good with their lethality poke with arcane comet builds, so make sure you're not afraid to give those a try. Finally, for support, the reason there are four S-tier champions is because these are just a cut above the rest. Although Taric and Leona were both nerfed on this patch, they are still incredibly good and valuable to a team. 
Sona drops down to A tier because of her massive nerfs on her Q this patch, but she still does have that insane scaling, and if you build a tier, the mana costs are negligible. For the exact same reason that Xerath is a good mid laner, this also makes him a decently good support as well, but poke supports in general are quite good. Champions like Karma, Zyra, Vel'Koz, and Xerath all reside in our support B tier because they're very good at what they do, which is poking. Thank you very much for watching the Mobilytics patch 7.24 video tier list. Make sure you check out Mobilytics at mobilytics.gg and have a great day.